Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, so the ER5, I am. Um, it was a little bit iffy on the starting up this morning, uh, as in the starting motor appeared to almost get stuck. So it did start up. What I need to check is the battery. There's pl plenty of fuel in it now, so I'm going to take it for a run, test the brakes and everything. Um, I'm going to check the battery, it might just need a boost because um, we haven't actually run it since we got that battery and it's kind of we've kind of been a bit unfair to the battery so it might need a top up and so on but yes, I've got one more piece to the puzzle and then I think I'll pop the battery out and give it a top up for an hour or two because the bike's not going until tomorrow anyway in fact, let's check the battery I'm going to show you how we check the battery guys while we're here so, first things first, pop the seat off and find the battery. Is it under the seat or is it under the side panel? I forgot. Right, one moment, I'm going to pop the seat and I'll come back. So, without the engine connected, put your multimeter to the 20 volt setting because it's 12 volts we're looking at. Now, you want to touch one side with the negative and one side with the positive and see what kind of reading we get. 12.4, so that's not bad, maybe a touch, maybe a touch low, it should be maybe, maybe 12.6, 12.8, but it's not a bad battery. Um, what you need to do now is fire it up, if it will fire up again, let's see if it gives us the same issues. And now we do the same test and see what we're idling at. So 13 point, yeah, look, 13.3, um, and if I rev the bike, that would go up to um, near a 14. So the bike is charging the battery, that's a good thing. Um, so I'll leave it idle a little bit anyway. Um, and it started straight away. So I do think the battery is was a touch low. Um, so the next step of this puzzle is I'm going to give it a run. I'm going to idle it for kind of 5 to 10 minutes and then give it a run. Yes, give it a run. So um, down here we get a little bit of spill. It's not fuel, it's coolant. I'm not sure where it's coming from. It's quite intermittent but it's not a lot. I think it's an overflow thing. I don't think it's anything to worry about. Uh, so I'm just gonna make sure the bike pulls um, in all the gears and brakes properly and you know runs, and I'm gonna let the battery charge a bit, although I am gonna pop it out. And I'll be back in kind of 10 minutes and we'll see, you know, what, what, what I think. And we'll, we'll start it up a couple of times and see if it's all good to go. Then I'll be showing you the last piece of the puzzle, topping up the oil, and it will be going back to Sue very soon. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I've had a think about the bike, and there's a couple of things that Sue and Rob need to keep in mind. The first one is that starting motor may need rebuilding. That's the next thing I'd get done. It's not something I can do because I haven't got the soldering skills, but a mechanic will just solder on new. Um, what do you call them? They are the copper connectors basically inside there. It shouldn't cost much at all. It's maybe a 40, 50 pound job. Um, whereas I'd have to buy a new motor at you know 200 pound if you can find it. Uh, I would check the um, regulator. If this um, starter at any point goes like it did before, I would check the regulator. Um, although, to be fair, I have just checked the regulator by checking the connection, uh, by checking the output at the battery, so I think the regulator is okay. So we're keeping in mind that the starting motor may need a rebuild. I think that's the final piece of the puzzle. I think you'll be alright while it's always warm and the battery's topped up, but once the battery gets a tiny bit low, then you're looking at um, just, just you'll, it won't be as reliable. And then it'll be general maintenance. I'm going to top up the oil to its max, because I know I, I did it halfway on purpose to see if there was any um, any change in level. I put this on uh, yesterday, I think it looks really good. And like I said, I'm gonna go for a run, five, 10 minutes, and then come back and we're gonna add the final piece to this puzzle. Then I pop the battery out, I put it on charge at home for a couple of hours, 
this bike should be good and ready to go except uh, this is not the most reliable bike in the world if i was sue this is my personal opinion i'd be selling this for a reasonable price and um and putting that money into something else um for you know with with half the mileage basically for for more reliability um i'd buy this bike at around 600 uh, because of the mileage and because actually to an extent I, I, I kind of like it now because I've done all the work um, I think you'd probably get 657 out of it uh, fairly easily considering it has a year's MOT so that's something to think about Sue and yes let me get this thing out give it a spin so that test ride's over now the bike cut out abruptly twice and it, it feels like a fuel starvation problem, but I can't see it. This bike idles all day long. Leave it alone, it will idle all day long. And then when you're moving along, it's almost like it loses power, but it doesn't. You don't see any power loss. It just abruptly cuts out. Um, and it's normally on kind of half throttle, full throttle. Basically, it kind of bogs and cuts. <coughs> Um, now I've done a, a couple of things here. <coughs> the um, there was a slight leak on this gasket here, so I've just kind of nipped these screws up here, and there was a bit of flow, a bit of drip from the fuel pipe at the back. So I've added this cable tie just to nip it up and make sure it's not overflowing so I'm gonna idle it again for another few minutes and see then I'll take it for another spin see now I can't take it too far this is the issue because it's not reliable and I do not want to push this thing back it weighs a ton which I had to do before now here's my real big concern first of all even if that little see that little can you see it there I just wiped that away there. So where is that coming from? Keep an eye there. Can you see it? It kind of just builds up gently there. Um, and like I said, I nipped up all these bolts already. Anyway, here's my uh, big concern. We've run on Prime, haven't we? I'm not going to run on Prime now because we know that um, ultimately the carbs overflow and that goes into the engine. But we've run on Prime and it still did that same abrupt cutting out. Now if you're running on prime, and I don't even mean I don't even mean through this tap. I mean we ran on prime direct from the fuel tank. That's my big concern. So if we definitely had fuel in the carbs, then why would it probably cut out if it wasn't? It, right, I'm gonna take it for another spin. I'm gonna idle it a bit actually. Let's see if it even starts. It feels good at first, and then it feels like it almost starts. I'll give it a couple of minutes. The idle's quite low now, that's the other thing. So, it's revving really well now, but I know if I took it round the block, that something changes. Something. Uh, something that feels like uh, uh, the, the carbs are starving. What I need to do is give it a run up and down the road on very low revs and then a run up and down the road on medium revs and then a run up and down the road on high revs and see what's going on there. Uh, see if it kind of will run all day long at low revs and medium revs at that high and just see, try and work out what the issue is there. Uh, there's no major flow there, there is that tiny bit of um, loop there which I'm sure I can nip up. But there's not enough air going in. So 
um, I was just looking at the uh, the pipe in there. This one. Let's see if it looks pinched or anything, but it doesn't. And I can't see any leak. So fuel will be going pumping up into the cars. I've had these cobs off and I have had them cleaned. Although it wouldn't hurt to do another one, would it? Maybe that's the next step today. Another carb clean, maybe even a balance. It's my balance is here. I think that's got it. But um definitely a clean. Alright, well I'm gonna idle it a bit and like I said, a couple of so exactly what I said happened did happen. Um, I drove it sensibly, and it rode really well. Um, and I rode it for kind of ten minutes sensibly. It rode, and then I I ragged it, and it cut out. So there, there's blatantly some sort of starvation issue here. I, my bet is it's on the float height on one side. Now I'm rubbish with float heights. I I learnt. Um, the most I've ever learnt before from that video, he did one not that long ago on the uh, ZL6, I believe. Um, so, uh, Nat's Knacker's Yard, if anyone's interested, go and have a look, subscribe, leave him a comment. But um, I'm going to have a look at that and get some advice from him about how you set them. I've never fully understood float heights. I've always set them by um, basically blowing through the, the, the fuel tube and just getting a, a rough kind of idea of when they should cut out but there is a specific measurements so I think this is going to be a carb off carb clean again just check everything over once more float height make sure float hasn't got a hole in it otherwise it would be um, filling up and and either letting too much fuel in or not letting enough in and so on and so on so this is definitely another carb off thing to see what's going on uh, I was meant to be, so I've looked online guys, uh, The I need to kind of work out what the deal is, look this is still stuck open overnight so my hypothesis of it loosening up was no good, I, I believe I can buy this carb, this carb, but not this one, and this carb cost 130 quid by the way, uh, so I don't know what the difference is, I think I mean, it wouldn't work, would it, because that's the other side, because if you turn this around, it would be upside down. So you actually do need this carb, which I can't find at the moment. Now, the way you tell it properly is by this bit here on the outside. Uh, you know, the throttle control. What I think I want to do is try and get this off and maybe try and take it apart. Is that an Allen... Is there an Allen in there? That's probably a pin. I might try and punch that out and see if I can get kind of in there anymore. Uh, I wonder if you... I don't... I mean, I don't know. Obviously, it's not meant to come out, is it? Because... How would you? How would you get it out? But I don't know what's trapping it. There's obviously an issue in here. So there's something trapping it. You'd have to take it apart. And it seems almost impossible to take it apart. So I don't know. Um, but like I said, I'm sure I can find this cob plenty. For some reason, I can't find that one. Right. Uh, Sue's bike. Break it back down. Let's get these cobs off again. Let's give it a good once over again, another good carb clean, let's see what's going on, let's set the floats a bit better than they might be, and try and get this thing a bit happier than it is. When it pulls, my god it pulls your arms off, but it, it, there's a starvation issue there that we just can't avoid. Okay guys, so um, a couple of things to just kind of acknowledge, I am going to film this part because it kind of goes against what I did originally with these carbs. Uh, as in, I can't have popped out the floats and cleaned them, I don't think. Um, also, the residues, let me show you this. See this residue here? 
that's coming from somewhere. So that needs another good clean, and that one too. Um, now that's surprising because I did clean it out. So what will happen with this stuff is once fuel goes into the bowls, right, it will um, liquefy that stuff and suck it back up and it will block the jets again. And you'll keep getting that cycle. So that needs another good clean. The whole car will need another quick clean. Here's my biggest kind of issue. Right. So I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold both these floats closed like this with my hands. Both closed. No fuel should go through. So when I blow through this tube, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't hear any anything so I'll show you it open it will splutter if they're open if one's open watch okay so you can hear it and you can see it both both open obviously now both closed fully now watch my lips I should blow up like a balloon Okay, so it didn't seal that well when I first, you know, as in five minutes ago. So there's, there's obviously a flow issue here, they need cleaning. I think it's probably this one, but I'm going to do them both, obviously. Uh, basically, I'm going to drop the uh, cloaks out to clean the area as well as I can. I'll go and get some Q-tips so that we can really clean the seats. And then I will um, pop them back in and give it all a good clean through again. Because there's obviously something more going on here, whether it's too much or too little fuel. Now, how I check the, um, the kind of float cut-off is by the same system we just used. So I cut, so I cut one off, so this one's cut off and this one's cut off, I blow and then I release pressure to see when it comes on so you can see it cuts off at a certain stage however that doesn't actually tell me that it cuts off at the right time at this stage because it might need to cut off a bit earlier same test down here Um, so they seem to be cutting off at around the same time, but you know, let's just get it uh, let's get it cleaned out. Let's get the seats cleaned out, and let's see if it's a bit better. The first time I blew through that when they were closed, it was still releasing air, so there is definitely an intermittent problem with the seats. So I think I've done enough to make it seem okay. I'm not fully clued up with how floats work obviously it lets fuel in and out if one gets stuck open it keeps letting fuel in that shouldn't really affect the running of the bike though i could be wrong someone let me know if one gets stuck closed though then it doesn't let fuel in and then you're not really running on that cylinder uh that kind of makes more sense but i think this was letting fuel in when it should have been closed and I'm not sure what the effect of that is if it's continually letting fuel in I guess if fuel if too much fuel is going up and in the carbon into the cylinder then it conks and cuts okay all right I think that is what's happening and I think that makes sense so I'll show you now this one's closed this one's open I, I definitely adjusted this left side here if I blow on it So I think that one was shutting off too early. I think it was stopping fuel too early, and then that meant the that bank, the right bank, wasn't running right, and then the left bank couldn't carry the bike. I could be wrong, but they both seem to be shutting on and off at the same time now. Uh, obviously, I gave the carbs a good clean again as well. I'm going to put it all back together, throw it on, see how it goes from there. It doesn't take long anymore to do this part, so. Uh, Let's see how that goes. So guys, we're back together and we're fired up. The fuel spill was uh, taking its toll on the engine and the old paint, but I can clean that up, no issue. Um, one of the pipes is dripping a tiny little bit, but I know where that is. I'll deal with that properly after. Um, it needs a test run. 
No point putting all the panels back on, there's fuel everywhere, it'll ruin the paint. Test run it like this with the seat on, it's safe. Up and down. I'll do the same test, I'm going to go at a fairly slow speed, then I'm going to go at a medium speed, then I'm going to go at full speed for a few minutes on each run and see um, where it lies. Sounds a tiny bit jumpy, doesn't it? It does seem better, but um, you just can't tell. I'm going to take it out for a spin. The idle's definitely a touch high because I, I messed with it when I took the part off. Let me get it out, I'll come back, I'll let you know exactly what's going on. It's a different bike, guys. I did the same test, pulls right through the rev range. Slow revs. Medium, half throttle. Whoa. Absolute full throttle, you ready? Absolutely different bike. Um, a tiny bit of fuel drip, I'm going to sort that out right now, I just need to get a good cable tie or a good clip on that. Uh, and I need to just, just really neaten up this, look. Uh, just sand it down, get a bit of uh, paint back on there so it looks nice and neat again. And we're good to go and then I'll just piece it all back together. And we'll put on my final piece of the puzzle which I've been really excited to do and haven't had a chance because it just hasn't run like that once. Um, that was a good 10-15 minutes guys, low revs, medium revs, high revs, I see no issues at all at this point, absolutely pulls your arms off, did not cut out, um, and because that issue was there from the beginning, and I hadn't dealt with the floats, I do think that was the issue, um, not, not kind of all along, but I think that was part of the running issues uh, where it was sitting over the years, I think one of the... Um, needles was letting too much or not enough fuel through or they weren't letting enough fuel through at the same time something like that so i'm very pleased obviously i'm going to piece it back together uh i just need there's that tiny drip i'm just going to sort that out now and then we'll be looking at the final piece of the puzzle and i'll get this back to sue it's going to be tomorrow if sue's okay with that so guys I've got no doubt at all in my mind now. That's the clip I added. No drips at all. Bikes running great. This is it. The bike's complete. Uh, I'll do a tiny bit of that patching up on the um, paint. I'll, I'll obviously add the extra panels. Um, I'm going to put the final piece of the puzzle on in a minute. You're going to see that. That's great. Um, like I said, it's as far as I'm aware, it's finished. I'm very pleased. Very pleased. Okay, I'll, I'll film the last piece of the puzzle anyway, so you guys know what it is. And uh, but let me just do this little bit of patching up first. So here it is, guys. You can see I've uh, neatened up them areas. Uh, a touch of high temp paint for the. Uh, engine there, engine paint actually, and um, the black paint on the frame that went a bit funny, that's all touched up, so that's fine, that will dry in its own time. The battery is out, I'm going to throw that on charge, so it's just got its you know full chance of living. Um, right, what's the final piece to this puzzle? I have given you um, some clues every time actually, I've talked about it, and uh, I'm giving you a clue right now, but let's have a look. I'm very excited about these. These are very specialist. Oh yeah. These are a purple bike kit lever set. They're specific to this bike so they should work. Um, they look like they will. I'm not messing around with any of the um, the yeah, brake fluid reservoir or anything. This is a direct swap of the levers only to these new purple ones. 
I think they're gonna look pretty cool. I ain't gonna film this guys. You take this screw off, there's normally an eight or ten mil nut underneath, and you pull this out. You put the new one in, you put the bolt back in, you screw it up. Simple as that. Nothing else gets affected. On here you might need to loosen the cable, get a rough idea where it's reset. Drop, same thing, drop, it'll be this pin here this time. Drop this out, bolt the new one in, and we'll have our final product. Can't wait to see them on, let's throw them on. So sadly guys, after getting these out, they don't actually fit. Um, Sue's ones are upgraded, they're adjustables, and these ones aren't. So for one, um, swapping them is not a good idea in case Sue likes them closer to the handlebars. And for two, the clutch one doesn't fit anyway, so I'm not putting them on. But, here it is, the final bike. I'm doing nothing else to it now guys. Um, what have we done? We fully went over and cleaned the bike uh, all the way down to the frame. We gave the engine a coat of high temp silver just to clean it up. We cleaned and de-rusted and greased the chain. I don't know why I'm saying we, I. Um, I changed the petrol tank for a black one because the red one had had, had it. I sprayed the, these panels in matte and satin black. I sprayed the uh, front shocks in a shinier black. I went over all of the wiring on this bike. The battery's brand new down there. Um, I adjusted the clutch fully. I went over the fuel system as the old fuel pump had a leak in it. Uh, cleaned the carbs twice, did it properly today, this time. And then kind of general MOT. Oh, hang on, the radiator had a hole in it. I've replaced the radiator. Um, and yeah, and then just kind of general bits and pieces. Um, I love this tank pad. I love it. Um, I like these Kawasaki stickers. I know it's a bit annoying that they're over the old ones, but I don't think it hurts. And if I could find my black pen, I would just, I would just tap these out a touch. Um, but I can't find it, so I'll leave it like that. I like the ER5 stickers. I like the paint job. I like the frame. Uh, the wheels came out really nice after a good clean. Front brakes are brand new, I put new pads on there, the old ones have disintegrated. Front brakes have been fully uh, recommissioned ready for the next, um, well, the next year. Uh, the exhaust was painted in just matte black, I believe, um, and it's cleaned. The oil was changed twice in the end, wasn't it, because it had, um, it, it had fuel in it. Um, it now sits at halfway, so I'll fully top that up before I take the bike back to Sue. Um, I'm just trying to see that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of at a nice level, actually. I may just leave it. Um, it needs kind of six months worth of riding. Oh, I can't remember anything else I've done, guys. Uh, just, just kind of paint and touching up and cleaning here and there. I left the hot grips off because I don't know if they ever worked. Um... Uh, but Sue can easily get them sorted. I can easily sort that out for Sue at some point. And I know Sue now, and I know um, where she is, and she can always contact me if she needs any more help with her bike. Starting motor, just you need to keep an eye on it. I just, I just think it technically would need a rebuild at this stage, and then you've got a much more reliable bike. But that's it. The bike absolutely pulled my arms off this morning, and yeah. And it's got its years MOT. So that's the final product there, guys. I'm going to show some photos from uh, before and after. And we're going to see kind of some sort of contrast. If I had this bike myself, It'd have to have an engine rebuilt. It'd have to have the pistons, rings, uh, and valves all done and reset to give it, uh, you know, it'll do another 60,000 miles. But there it is. I'm not going to film the handing over to Sue. I, I don't like that stuff, if I'm being honest. I, I just don't, I don't want to see people's reactions. I don't want any of that stuff on camera. It's more about me than them or anyone else. I'm that person that don't like that don't like people who film themselves doing good deeds because I think good deeds are selfless. Um, 
I, I love the bike, absolutely love the bike. And that's it. I haven't got the time to do any of this today. So I'm going to fully pop these carbs off tomorrow, fully uh, get them kind of opened up and have a good look and a good play with this tomorrow. I, I, I just, I don't know if I can do anything to solve this issue here. I don't know what's going on with it, that's the problem. I can put the grips on it now and it will turn, but it's not flowing free enough for the spring itself to return it. So, I mean, there's an issue straight away. And then it will need a good cleaning out and stuff. And all the screws are rounded and hard to get to and ruined and, yeah. Oh, I just think it needs fully stripping down at this stage, guys, and uh, and we can then see what happens there. So I'm going to try and see what's going on here, what's stopping its spin, and we'll go from there tomorrow. If anyone knows of anyone who has a spare set of carbs, please let me know. Uh, Daniel uh, sent me someone on Facebook Marketplace who's breaking one but he hasn't got carbs so uh, if anyone does know anyone breaking a bike let me know please so guys I just messed with this a touch because I can't help myself if you um, connect up the return line and everything and actually we do have you know some on it's not it's definitely not springing back on its own but it is good enough look that is definitely good enough to tell us if this is a running riding bike so tomorrow we will definitely be able to yeah to tell if this is a uh, a good starting running riding bike and this needs a bit more adjusting as well so uh, it should be a tiny bit better than that so I can open but I do have to physically close it look I have to close it off but like I said that will give us an idea and uh, when it comes to selling it, I'll, I'll call it cruise control. Uh, obviously, I'm joking, guys. I want it to be as safe as possible. But I feel much better now that that is kind of usable. That is usable. I'd use the bike like that at this stage. But it's not perfect. But we still have quite a bit of play in here. So, yes, we're looking better. Brilliant. Brilliant.